So so you drove from there to Austin. Yeah. They showed up with the wrong sprinter. The seats didn't go back. We were oh, like, no. Like a Southwest flight? It was terrible. Terrible. Didn't have to pay for it. Then Austin, the you, you went to Comedy Mothership or no? No, I didn't. I went to, I did my show. <laughs> Of course you didn't go comedy mothership. Why would you go comedy mothership? Why is Joe gonna invite you to there? Come on, son. Come on now. Come on now. Oh yeah, because I had two shows, so they, I got out. It's late. like same time the I mothership's know, right, yeah. open too. So I you're wanted just to go conflicting. to the mothership, and I was gonna go meet David Lucas, and then by the time I got out of my shit, <laughs> um, it was yeah. Just- you hear all the stories like he just had Schultz on uh, on his show. You had Shane Gillis has been there, but then. You know, David Luke is always around, and Derek Post. All my boys are there. It reminds me of the comedy store days, like the yeah. golden yeah. years yeah. of comedy store. I'm like, ah, yeah. I feel like you're missing out. They're really doing something over there. You know, I mean, I, I haven't been at the place. You know what's funny about that? Um, when you listen to Tim Dillon, he says that he had a bit of a sketchy encounter at the comedy store because I guess it's under new management now since um, Rogan essentially took – that's the word on road. He took all the best people from the comedy store and basically, you know, told them to kind of come and follow him over at flipping um, Austin. And a lot of the good guys and gals are over there. And just maybe people just moved on. Who knows? Pe- um, Post pandemic. But it's a, it's a different group of people running the show there. And they run it a certain way. And Tim didn't have his little running with people there. And it seems like other guys and gals post um Joe Rogan leaving and post everyone getting cancelled, the booking type had kind of changed. So certain people don't get booked there anymore. You know, whatever. I think I remember once reading somewhere that someone said there was a woman that's now doing the booking um, who's kind of woke and doesn't like some of the guys that were creeps. I don't know. Who knows what the story is? But clearly, a lot of the good boys club that were there before aren't necessarily being welcomed that they were previously. So a lot of them are, you know, saying what, what Flipping Brendan's saying, the good old days of the store when it basically was them running it. Him, Rogan, Brendan, so him, Rogan, Callan, all these guys, Chris D'Elia, they're all the big, the, kind of the hot shots of the comedy store. They're the ones everyone kind of came to see. And since Rogan left, they've all been kind of, you know, essentially been iced out of the comedy store, no pun intended. And um, yeah, they're now kind of reminiscing over the good old days when they used to kind of run it. It's fucking hilarious. Place looks amazing with the drone shots and sick. all this stuff, but and the pictures that they post. Um, I try not to see any of it. it makes me sad. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think of the name? Because you know what? It. I didn't like it at first. Mm-hmm. It, I gotta say, it's growing on me. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm gonna hate on it because Rogan hated on my name on the on the whiskey. I think the name thing is hilarious. It's kind of like similar to that joke people say about like it's people that say um, guys online that will say oh, that will debate about whether or not they fuck Rihanna or not. It's like yeah, you know. Who cares if you'd want to fuck her or not? She probably would never flip and touch you with a barge pole. So complaining about the name of the comedy store or the comedy mothership is hilarious considering none of these guys are going to ever perform there anytime soon. If you think about it, Chris Lee has probably got a better chance of performing at a comedy mothership than Brendan. I feel like despite one thing you have to always, I think I realize over time, especially when it comes to Joe, Joe says a lot of shit, but his actions usually are more of a reflection of what he actually thinks. So he'll say somebody's lovely, somebody's cool, somebody's awesome, somebody's their best friend. But then you see the amount of times he's actually invited them onto their sh- onto his show, and it kind of tells you everything about how he views them as a uh, you know like as a person in general. And I think with Brendan, as much as he kind of used to defend Brent, not defend him, but kind of you know stick up for Brendan and say how much of a good guy he is, it's also very telling that he hasn't gone out of his way to invite Brendan to do a spot at his new club. Or just to invite him to be a guest. Zero. He's kind of just, you know, he's clearly want to do this club the right way, have any legit comics up there, people he actually rates, and him being a bit of a comedy snob, it'd be a bit crazy if he did invite Brendan on there on stage with all the killers that are obviously performing there week in, week out. I just find that hilarious, really. So maybe Chris has got a better chance because Joe used to always talk about how much of a murderer Chris Aaliyah was before he got cancelled. Maybe it doesn't help Chris Lear because I don't think they were ever friends. I don't think him and Joe were ever close, close. They may have been like colleagues, but maybe that's the, the difficulty in trying to get back in his good graces. But I think Chris Lear has a better chance of being via to the comedy mothership than Brendan. That's my initial guest. Guess, guess, guess. Whiskey? It was oh, Tiger, Tiger Thick. Thing. Great whiskey, hate the name. Mm. Great club, hate the name. Mm. I, 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 that still stings, isn't it? That little line that Joe Rogan said that time still hurts him. That's how you can tell this guy's so thin skinned. He goes on Rogan, he debuts his whiskey. Rogan does the best thing for him because, you know, it's proof. I think we can see from how Eddie Bravo reacted when he tasted Brendan's whiskey. And I think this other guy, I forgot his name, somebody else tasted it and didn't like it. 
clearly Brendan's whiskey is not tasty in the slightest. People don't like the taste of it. So Rogan did Brendan a big favor by saying it actually tastes pretty decent, but he just didn't like the name. And I, I, I don't like the name either. The, the, the name sounds like it should be flipping Tiger Cum or something, right? It sounds fucking awful. Um, if anything, it should be called maybe Thick Whiskey to tie in with everything, but he wanted to use his son's name in it as well. Maybe even Tiger Whiskey would have been better, but having it be Tiger Thick Whiskey, like, it just it's weird it's a strange combination of you know uh words to describe a whiskey and even a bottle itself it looks like soy sauce you see that from afar you'd never think that was booze you think that was soy sauce vinegar i don't know honey like <laughs> uh, <laughs> i don't know like it just doesn't look like whiskey in a slight it's such a bizarre bottle design everything about it looks horrible and the sticker label the label is just too big simply too big I thought when I first heard, yeah, exactly. Even shades, even Tiger Blood, that might have been pretty decent as a as a name for a whiskey. I, actually, to be fair, Tiger Blood might have been actually pretty decent as a name. It's a little bit weird, but Tiger Blood probably would have been decent. But I was a like, comedy mothership. Would you say it enough? But yeah, it kind of grew on me, man. Like <laughs> it's like when a new expansion team comes to NFL, you're like Carolina Panthers. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah. But because it's also it's different than just like you know chuckles or some shit or the lol club or laugh laugh hut well i know? think the original plan was called the comedy store austin really but if you yeah but if you're gonna do that obviously the comedy store is owned yeah. by the the shores yeah and then he would have to be in business with the shores yeah, and he's not, like well no it's my no, thing yeah, and they're like well then you can't use our name he's like all right say less yeah yeah no i love it he's always spilled their deal so that's funny isn't it right that's funny um, that he went to call it the comedy store Austin. It's actually a good thing he didn't call it that because that's horrible. I think the, from what I read online, the insistence on calling clubs comedy comedy is because of SEO, from what I read online, because all, all these comedy clubs have comedy in their name. They just can't help it. So I think it's SEO because I remember seeing this other actual interesting post, someone posted on flipping Twitter actually, of like a Thai restaurant that said... <clears throat> I think the Thai restaurant name of the actual restaurant itself was uh, Thai food near here or Thai, yeah, Thai food near here or something. So if you type into Google, it would come up as the first one. So it's an SEO thing more so than the branding. But I think to those guys who work there, they probably just call it the mothership. But if you want to, you know, make sure it's search engine optimized, obviously add in the comedy things so people can find it and shit. That's yeah, not, so that's yeah. why I changed the comedy mothership oh. and there's aliens everywhere. They would have, that would have been good for the comedy store if he did that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Why, why, you think? Yeah, I know. Because the entire staff works over there and all the comics. He basically took the golden years of the comedy store and just moved it to yeah. there. But now it's run by the same guy, Adam Egit. Uh -huh. Monsters, dude. Yeah. and, they, and they, <laughs> They're not going to be there anymore. It's hilarious, man. It's just funny, the the things Joe does. Like He always says one thing, and then... You can always tell by his actions how he actually feels. Brian Brian Cam's my best friend. Okay, if he's your best friend, why don't you invite him on the show and get him to defend himself against his rape allegations? Brendan Shaw was a lovely guy. Okay, cool. Then why don't you get him on show to defend himself against these allegations of drug walking? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not want to be involved. Chris Lee is a murderer. He's a beast. He's a good guy. Okay, cool. Get him on your show so he can defend himself for the diddling allegations. Brian Cullen, and then maybe the comedy stuff. Like, when's the last time you've seen Brendan on the show with Joe? Has he ever been on the show? Has he ever been on tour? I don't think he's been on tour. I'm sure Brendan did this. I'm sure Brendan did a few sets with Rogan at the store before. I'm pretty sure. When Rogan used to do the comedy, Joe Rogan and Friends shows at the store. I'm sure that happened. But he's never gone on tour with him. He's maybe taken Brian Callen on tour, maybe Brian, Joe Rogan. But I've never seen him open for him that zero. That side of comedy, when it comes to him and, and Brendan, they're friends on podcasts, but they, he's got no respect for the dude when it comes to comedy. And by the way, Chin hasn't said a word in ages again. And you know what? Honestly, it's off 6th well, Street, too. The lineups are great, but even besides... Is that... Hassan, was that... And then besides that, though... Brendan um, breathing into the mic is lovely. Lineups are ridiculous. But besides Compared that... Compared to out here right now? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Crushes Well, us. yeah, of course. Crushes well, because, but, but it is the beginning, and people are flying in to see it and do the thing. For so, sure. So, But here's the thing. They still got... Even when all the comics stop trying to go there to check it out, they still got some fucking monsters out there. They got talent. You know? And then Rogan's doing... Rogan he, do it he, he does an open mic Sunday, Monday night, so he's building up the younger talent. Yeah. 
Oh, dude, cool. he's gonna succeed. I mean, he, that motherfucker doesn't miss. You think Rogan will succeed? That's a guy you don't want to <laughs> bet against. It looks great, man. It looks great. Yeah, it looks really cool. And also, um, also, <laughs> what was I gonna say about that? No missing uh, out. It's oh, so funny. The, the, it, the shows sell out before people even know what the lineups are. You know what I mean? Oh, for like, sure. I was talking to people. Um, I think it sold out like nine months in advance already. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, because yeah, it's definitely got that curiosity factor. <laughs> but it's also, if I mean, Rogan's not gonna put stupid. Uh, Stupid comics up, you know what I mean? No, he's yeah. gonna put like the he would, never people put Brian, he would never put Brian Callen up, right? Never, never. Brian's Brian not, Callen you know, Brian's not allowed there. Hey, guys, he's not allowed. Brian's not allowed there. Oh, see you, chin. Oh, oh, oh. there. I didn't know you were coming oh, in. Oh, dude, 